Welcome into NFL Daily by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. He is Matthew Peterson. Producer Jack Lauderay on the ones and twos, making everything we do on today's show possible. Coming your way on today's show, an NFL news and rumors mailbag. It's been a crazy offseason, a crazy free agency period, a couple of days in. So I can imagine a lot of you have questions. We are here to provide for the people and our loyal subscribers and answer all of your questions. So with that, we start off this mailbag with this question coming in from Andrew. If I'm the Raiders, I'm waiting for Kyler Murray or Lamar Jackson to be available for a trade. Matthew, your reaction to that? I hope you're waiting somewhere comfortable with a lot of food and water because I don't think Kyler Murray gets dealt. I think he wants to add that extension. The Cardinals will do that before they trade their star quarterback away, who, by the way, they failed on drafting Josh Rosen to star QB. Yep. They know how difficult it can be, even in the first round, to get their guy. As for Lamar Jackson, the Ravens aren't trading him. So if you're the Raiders and you're waiting, I'd wait for a long time and don't hold your breath. All right, yeah. next question coming in from Martin. Does this mean all the money Dallas is saving, they can make big signings next season? Chase? Yeah, maybe by... Basically, releasing Lyle Collins, they have about $30 million of cap space. That's a lot of money to mess around with with a roster that now suddenly has holes on a team that had home field advantage in the wild card round of the playoffs. They lost to the San Francisco 49ers, but they traded away Amari Cooper for late round picks. They lost Randy Gregory. They released Lyle Collins. So it's almost as if Dallas is trying to compete right now, but also build for the future. And a lot of smart organizations do that. What's surprising about this aspect for Dallas, they're always aggressive and always willing to spend at least for internal free agents, not so much external. So we'll see if that philosophy changes moving forward, but that's a lot of cap space moving into the future. $5 Super Chat coming in from Game Geek. Cheers to you. It's been a crazy... Op? Operation? About the Murray situation and I, the Arizona Cardinals? What do you think? It's been a crazy offseason is maybe what you meant to ask. Yeah. It's been a crazy offseason for Kyler Murray. And look, he has done some things on the football field with his arm and legs that I haven't seen quarterbacks do before. And that's why he has special talent. That's why he was taken number one overall out of Oklahoma. And at times throughout his NFL career, he's really flashed. I can tell you this, though. All of the chatter about him not being a great team leader – it seems to translate because when things are going great, man, he has so much confidence and swagger. When things go awry, his body language goes in the tank. And I think as a face of a franchise, you can't allow that to happen. Ask yourself this question. Does Tom Brady ever had bo bad body language? He forgot downs in Chicago. That's the worst of it, right? He broke the... Never yeah. has bad body language. So that's something that Kyler can improve on. Yeah, he just he smashed that tablet, remember, on the bench. That uh, too, yes. But you're right. But it's not bad body boxing. language on the field, you know? Uh, uh, when it, teammates drop a pass, make a mistake, miss a block, it's not like Tom Brady. He'll bark at him, yeah. but he's not going to sulk around like that. I right. think Kyler can improve in that area. And look, he's still young. Yep, absolutely. With that in mind, who is the biggest NFL free agency winner so far? Let us know in the comments down below who you think it is. I can tell you the biggest loser is probably maybe the Cardinals, maybe the Cowboys. But as for biggest winner. Patriots up there. Um, the losers. Patriots are losers, our producer Jack tells us. Chargers. Biggest winner. Dolphins, I like the Chargers, dude. They got Jets. Mac and J uh, J.C. Jackson. Yeah, they've crushed it. They All have right. solidified that defense. No doubt. Next question coming in from Ventura M. Speaking of Chargers. Lyle Collins to the Chargers. A lot of fan buzz with this. I'm just not sure how much money he's going to demand. I think there will be other suitors out there. I also think the other teams who are going to be in pursuit of Lyle Collins might be able to offer more money than the Chargers. He got Rashawn Slater at left tackle. Phenomenal pick last year out of Northwestern. Corey Lindsley at center. Obviously, they've been aggressive going after Khalil Mack. J.C. Jackson, that's secondary with J.C. Jackson and Derwin James going to be great, but Lyle Collins at right tackle, I'm not sure how much money they have to really spend on that. Yeah, I think he's going to go for somewhere between six. He was making 10 in Dallas. That was too much, so yeah. maybe a team overpays him, but I think closer to eight most likely for Collins, uh, wherever he ends up. All right, next question coming from Cy Gray. Are you guys hearing about potential Detroit Lions moves? Um, yeah, not really. I will tell you this. Cricket? Look, <laughs> <laughs> that's where the – I'm sorry, I'll, dude. Hey, I'll tell you this. DJ Chark, one year, $10 million, that has the potential to be a high potential signing. I mean, he's a yeah. very good player. And the fact that, yes, considering the injury issues, it's good. They only signed him to a one-year deal worth $10 million. 
he can certainly eclipse ten million dollars in value. Khalif Raymond also going back to the Lions. Uh -huh. Good special teamer, good gadget player. I like what Detroit is doing. We'll see what they do in the NFL draft. Will Aiden Hutchinson fall to his hometown team at number two? I think they're really gearing up for that. But what they did last year under Dan Campbell, I was thoroughly impressed. Yeah, to wrap it up on that note, they're stuck with Jared Goff just through the contract implications yes. for one more year. I'm guessing they don't want to make big signings this offseason, waste a year of valuable contracts on players when they're not ready to compete or close to it. Instead, they kind of, I would punt this year, yeah. get some good draft picks in next season. Then they were going to get their quarterback in the draft in a loaded QB class, most likely Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud. And they've got tons of money to spend. And if you look ahead at the free agents for next year, it's exciting. Now here on NFL Daily by Chat Sports, we have been live longer than anybody else throughout all four days of NFL free agency. We pumped up more content, more so than anybody else. And we've been the most watched NFL free agency coverage on the internet. Now we've been live on YouTube, but also on Rumble. So you can really pick and choose your spots as to where you want to go, just like an NFL free agent. You want to watch us on YouTube? Do that. If you want to watch us on Rumble, though, free and uncensored content and exclusive content on the Rumble app, especially here on NFL Daily, just go to rumble.com slash NFL Daily. And while you're there, hit that green subscribe button so you can stay in the know with all of the latest NFL news and rumors. $5 super chat from Coach Grady. What grade... Nice, no pun intended. Do you give the Jets in free agency also, since they addressed a lot of holes, who should they target in the NFL draft? Coach Grady, let me tell you this. I like what the Jets have done yeah. in free agency. Braxton Berrios, extremely affordable contract. Lakin Tomlinson, $13 million per year to protect Zach Wilson. So now you have Elijah Vera Tucker, Makai Becton, hopefully on a rebound season, and Lakin Tomlinson as your offensive line I like the signing of Whitehead, that safety. The Jets have done some sneaky good things. What can you do in the NFL draft? Get a bona fide, really good wide receiver for Zach Wilson. That's where I'm going. How about you? Yeah, I think you need to go best player available. The Jets were at four. The only, I think a good pick could be Kyle Hamilton. He's like a, he's more than a safety. He's a do-it-all defensive player. But my only fear is that was Jamal Adams. And it didn't work out long-term in New York. So hopefully yeah. you just don't make the same mistake twice. That isn't to say you can never draft a high-profile safety, but if you're jet set four, you just take the best talent on the board, whether that's another offensive lineman or whether it's like you said, if you think Garrett Wilson or Traylon Burks or Chris Olave, one of these loaded wide receiver draft class candidates, you go get him, you get your top guy for Zach Wilson. Shifty Block Z, do you think the Chiefs will get Julio Jones? I'm not sure how much he fits that offense. There were some rumblings about KC checking in on Julio Jones last year before he got traded to the Tennessee Titans. Older player, injuries continue to pile up while the production has decreased. Some concerns there. Now, another weapon outside of Tyreek Hill, outside of Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes, It'd be great, but I think more so Julio Jones has name value as compared to actual player value. What do yeah. you think, Matthew? Yeah, I, I think you're spot on with the name. Like, this is Julio Jones you're talking about, but this isn't fantasy football in 2017 anymore. So I think for the next, as long as Mahomes is there, this the Chiefs will always be a team of, ooh, this aging wide receiver that was once really good. Maybe he wants to go on a Super Bowl run with the Chiefs. That narrative is going to be with them for the next 10 years probably. Make sure you are subscribed, by the way, to us here at Chat Sports because, listen, we're not, we're not just stopping NFL free agency. We are full steam ahead, NFL draft into the 2022 season. So make sure you are subscribed to get breaking NFL news and rumors, trades, draft box, uh, mock drafts, and trade rumors, and draft rumors, basically anything under the sun about the NFL, NBA, college football, you name it, we do it. So subscribe today at YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. Cujo with the next question. What if Honey Badger goes to Chargers? Doesn't Thoughts? fit. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't you got, fit. Yeah, you got Derwin James. Yeah. I, I like the idea of – I'm trying to think of another safety, but I like the idea of a one-two punch at safety, but I don't know if that's a good investment. I, I think there's other other needs to put money towards than overloading that secondary in L.A. Yeah. I, I don't know. If Can't I continue to, to spend big-time money on two safeties, Derwin yeah. James and then Tyron Matthew. And then on top of that – J.C. Jackson, who the first two years of his deal, $20 million average annual value. All right. Mafi, 
How do you like the Casey Hayward signing for the Falcons? The I Falcons like do anything. I like it. Yes. Because they yeah. haven't done much. <laughs> the last two years, they really haven't done They've much. Been but so quiet. Casey Hayward can still play. Um, he wasn't in that like upper echelon of cornerbacks on the free agency market. He was kind of in like that middle tier ish. Yeah. He could play. Good player. Uh, you get him for a good value signing. And the Falcons at least did something because up to that point, before signing him, uh, they kind of stood pat. We'll see what happens with Deshaun Watson. Obviously, if they land him, it changes their offseason. They might go from like a D grade to an A grade, but we're recording this on Thursday, so we'll see what happens. And not to be dramatic, but you've got a rising star in A.J. Terrell, one yeah. of the best corners Very in the NFL player. in the second year. You have to stay competent and competitive because when he wants that free agency and wants that extension, you don't want him leaving Atlanta because for the first four years of his contract there, you guys were just kicking the ball and you know having fun on Sundays and getting Chick-fil-A on Saturdays. Next question, Chase. Chew allure. What can the 49ers do? I don't think they're going to spend a lot of money in free agency. I really don't. Now, on the outer edges of that roster, do they try to add depth pieces? I think that could certainly be the case. I honestly think that contract extensions could be in play for Nick Bosa as well as Debo Samuel. And that right there is shelving out a lot of money. You have to figure out what to do with Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, $26.9 million cap hit this upcoming year. That's a lot of money to free up. And once that happens, does that lead to a Bosa or Debo contract extension? Do they try to sign another player? You kind of have to see what happens with Deshaun Watson first. Biggest NFL free agency loser. We've talked a lot about winners here at Chat Sports, and we are winners like myself and Matthew Peterson because we've been live for like four hours today on top of the I don't know, infinity hours that we've been live this week. But let us know biggest NFL free agency losers into the comment section. A couple teams that come to mind. Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. The Jacksonville Jaguars, I like how they've been aggressive. But really, they spent a lot of money. The Jags and too much money. thought free agency was a silent auction without <laughs> understanding what a silent auction is. Yes. They $5, bid $5, on $5, everyone $5. Yeah. and thought whoever guesses it right gets the player. Christian Kirk. Unbelievable. $10 million. $50 million. $20 yeah. million. $20 million sold to the Jaguars. Like, do they call Christian Kirk's agent and go, we'll give you $100 million. And Kirk, uh, you know, mute it. and then Say less. Yeah, and they're like, actually, sorry. That was rude. We'll do 120 Bet. Unbelievable. Next question coming in from Alexander Games. What is Dallas doing? We're not sure. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. That's what they're doing. We're not sure. Not a damn thing. Signed to Marcus Lawrence. Taco Frog 88. What positions can Houston fill all the above? Look, they don't have a lot of positions to fill because they've been one of the sneaky teams throughout free agency that has made so many signings that nobody knows about because people don't know the players. Yeah. But a bunch of the deals, and they've made a lot of them, are all worth little money value but just adding depth pieces. So, like, they've made a bunch of deals but no splashes. They've all kind of been pencil dyes, as I talked about earlier here on NFL Daily by Chat Sports. I so, think – Houston's yeah. uh, in a spot like Detroit where they go, you know what? We're not going to spend big money this free agency because we're going to give all these contracts. And let's say we have a four-year contract to someone. We're not going to get our real quarterback until 2023. Well, now that one that four-year contract, you know, 25% is burned up on a lost season to begin with. Let's save our money and let's be aggressive next offseason when we like the QB class, when we have a top pick again. Yep. Kelsey E., last question in this mailbag. How would you guys grade the Bills' free agency so far? Von Miller, I thought it was way too much money. Yeah. I like the player right now, but how does he age with like $50, $60 million in guaranteed money? The Bills, they're going to be a Super Bowl contender this upcoming year. So that's what I know about the Bills. What do you think, Matt? I, I, like, I like aggressiveness. Yeah. This AFC has just gotten better and better. So if you're not moving forward and you're staying still, you're going backwards. So I like the Von Miller, the O.J. Howard. The, the tight end spot in Buffalo has kind of been sneaky difficult. I, I've liked who they had in Dawson Knox, but they haven't had that real tight end you know, top guy for Josh Allen. Maybe O.J. Howard can do that now that he's free from uh, Gronkowski's shadow in Tampa Bay. Feel free to grade the Bills free agency. Working off that question from Kelsey into the comments section. And thanks for watching today's Mailbag.